Hello YouTube, Z-Man Zilla here, and I have been asked some questions recently about logics uh, involved with uh, makes it basically making timed events. Uh, the, the idea that somebody came up to me with was they said, hey, is there a way to make a uh, an enemy encounter where you have to kill a certain amount of demons within that amount of time? Uh, and And then if you don't do it in time, you lose, but if you do do it in time, you win. And I said, oh, yeah, that's pretty easy. And it gives us a really great opportunity to take a look at a couple things. We're going to take a look today at counters. We're going to be taking a look at a couple of different forms of variables, specifically integers and Booleans, the difference between the two and how to use them. And uh, we're going to look at some cool techniques for using them. So before we get right into what all this logic does here, and it's a pretty simple setup, but uh, before we get into all, what everything does, why don't we just run a quick test here and I'll show you. So I've got a simple thing set up here. It's called Kill 10 Dudes. All right, so we're going to press Y. And, okay, so I'm going to kill that dude. Oh, another one comes up. You'll notice i got a demon counter to let me know how many dudes I've killed. Basically, if I can kill 10 dudes before the timer runs out, I win. All right. All right, 36 seconds left. Will I do it? Let's find out. Yes, I did. I killed 10 dudes in time. All right, so this time we're going to run it, but uh, we're going to not kill 10 dudes in the time given. As you can see, I have 56 seconds left to kill 10 dudes. I can kill one dude. Sure, one dude's fun. I could even kill two. Oh, why not three? Let's indulge ourselves. I killed nine dudes, but I have six seconds left. Can I kill this tenth dude in time? I don't know. I'm pretty distracted. And I didn't, so I lose. Okay, so as we can see, the game works. The The, the scenario works, but let's see why it works. Uh, you know, so first off, just real basic and simple here, I've got a thing that starts the encounter. So, uh, and the basic thing it does is it removes the button after I push it, but it also does a couple other things. First off, it starts off the spawners. Now, I... Uh, the thing is that you can easily do something like this with, say, survival rounds or like custom group encounters. But one of the problems with that is, first off, if you're doing custom geo builds, you want to use individual spawners so that you can put dudes where you know they're going to be. You want to have more control over where your dudes spawn up. So you want to be able to put those single dude spawners. And that's what this technique addresses, among many other things. So you, I have these uh, starting off our dude spawners. Okay. And then the final thing it does is it starts this timer. Now, this is a timer for 60 seconds uh, to, you know, make sure that we're killing 10 dudes. Or, well, excuse me, the timer is just for 60 seconds. Uh, but I call it kill 10 dudes because you can you can sh make the, the, the timer show up on the HUD. And if you're giving players a time limit, you should probably do this. <laughs> I mean, but uh, so when it shows up on the HUD, it says kill 10 dudes. That's why I named the timer kill 10 dudes. All right. Now, uh, let's look at the dude spawners themselves. You notice there's a whole bunch of like goofy stuff on them. Okay. And uh, actually, why don't we just spread one out here so we can take a little better look at everything I'm doing here. All right. Now, First off, um, there's a there's an outer source that's spawning these up for the first time. It's sort of slapping them on the ass and getting them started. So it spawns up a dude, right? Now, every time a dude is spawned, okay, take a look at this. First off, every time a dude is spawned, okay, I've set up a counter here called Demon Spawned. You want there to be this counter here. You want, you want to be able to keep track of how many demons have been spawned already. So what you do is you have a thing that says on Demon Spawned, and you can hook it up to all of your spawners. In fact, it's probably a good idea to do so. From all of your spawners, have them all connect to a single node, a single on Demon Spawned node, all right? And then every single time a demon is spawned, it's going to add a count to the counter, all right? And your counter is set for however many demons you want spawned. In this case, 10. Okay? 
And then when the count is reached, we're using a Boolean to keep track of whether or not the demons have been maxed out. Now, uh, a quick word on Booleans. Booleans are super, super useful. If you've been using integers or you know other variables to kind of keep track of things in your map, and those things that you're trying to keep track of are simple yes or no questions, you've been doing too much work. Booleans are super great for a couple of reasons. First off, they all they check for is false or true. And secondly, they're self-testing. What do I mean by self-testing? Well, check this out. I have a bit right here where I, I have another variable called demons killed that we're using to keep track of how many demons have been killed. Okay. Now, in order to test that uh, and test that variable to check it against the number 10, because basically when demons killed reaches 10, that's how you know you won, right? But every time it gets... Uh, every time it changes, I'm having it run a separate test node to check whether or not demons killed is equal to or greater than 10 yet. Okay, You have to do that on a whole completely separate node. Booleans, you don't have to do that. You can use the Boolean itself to test. Okay, So like right here on each and every one of these doodads here, we've got uh, every time... First off, every time it... Um, uh, uh, let's see, every, we were, we're talking about this counter right here. Every time it adds a single demon spawn to the counter, it's checking the, the count. And once it reaches that count of 10, it sets demons maxed, which is a Boolean, to true. It starts off as false. All right. So this is, this is a simple yes or no question. Have I reached 10 demons yet? Yes or no? Uh, and so we have demons maxed to check that. And every time a demon gets spawned, it it knows whether or not it's reached that max because it only sets to true when this counter goes to 10. So that's what you're doing with this counter here. You're making it so that once it reaches the count of 10, you set this to true, and that's how your map will know that you've spawned the maximum amount of dudes. Now back over here to our spawner. Okay. Uh, now we've got an on, uh, excuse me, here we go. So it, it spawns a demon, right? It spawns a demon at the beginning of the map. Okay. Now, you'll notice I'm using an on-encounter-finished node as opposed to a um, as opposed to on-demon-killed. The reason for this actually comes from Void Runner, and he informs me that there are certain circumstances where your map will bug out if you use on-demon-killed. It's, it's a rare occurrence, but it can happen. So, like, to, there are two things you can come off of here. Like, there's, there's um, on-demon-killed, on which can be a little buggy, and on encounter finished. So what I like to do is I like it. I like to set up a scenario where these spawners will only spawn one demon at a time, and then you use on encounter finished whenever to indicate when the demon dies. So every time uh, a demon that was born from this node dies, first off it adds one to the demon's killed integer, which is an integer. I've got. I'm using an integer for that one because first off, uh, you if you want to show it in the HUD at all, it has to be a variable. And secondly, uh, for something as, as varied as how many actual demons have been killed, you do want to use variables for that. It's not a simple yes or no question. So you're not going to use a Boolean to track that. You're going to use a variable to track a, a precisely how many demons have been killed. So every time an encounter is finished, which is when a demon is killed, you add one, this, uh, you add one okay, to demons killed, which is an integer that starts the map at zero and adds one every single time. Another thing you do is every single time a demon is killed, you're testing your Boolean. And this is the, the demons maxed again. We're testing to see if that count of 10 has been reached yet, okay? If it has, we don't want to spawn any more demons, right? So this is, by the way, this is a, a step that you would take to make sure that, say you've got an encounter in the middle of your map like this, the, where the map doesn't end right at the end. You do still want it to stop it, generating 10 demons so that's why you would need this step so say for instance you've got an encounter somewhere in the middle of your map where you've got to kill 10 demons before you're allowed to move on and if you don't you lose or some terrible thing happens you want to be able to track whether or not uh, all the demons have been killed so what this does is it checks and sees okay have we killed 10 demons yet uh, according to this this boolean that only hits true when we hit 10 demons all right uh had, or when it makes 10 demons all right so it hasn't made 10 demons yet so um we're gonna if, if it tests false it'll spawn another one all right but it only does it when one is killed from that spawner so the it tests false it says okay we haven't reached 10 demons yet spawn another one bam another one comes into the field of battle 
So um, you'll notice, by the way, that when we were doing our test play and I killed nine demons, there was only that one demon walking around. There wasn't three. That's why. That's why, because of this whole setup right here. Okay, so that's what you're trying to do there. You're, you're, you're using a Boolean to keep track, and as long as you haven't hit 10 demons, it'll spawn up another demon uh, for the slaughter. So those are your demon spawners themselves, and as you can see, all three of the demon spawners are set up the exact same way. In fact, what you do is you build this little setup right here, and then you just you do the, the, the thing with the right trigger where you select all the nodes, and then you just copy... And you can paste the whole ordeal wherever you need it to be, and most of your work is done for you. Okay, so that's that's a that's a little fun tip for you. Okay, so every time one of these demons is dying, okay, it's adding one to this variable right here. Okay, this is uh, the variable demons killed, and as you can see, I've got it set up: initial value zero, minimum value zero, and maximum value ten. Okay. Now, I've got it set up here as a separate node because what's going on up here is it's testing it every single time it changes. Every single time Demons Killed changes, it knows to run this test. And that test is checking to see if Demons Killed equals 10 yet. Okay? All right. So if Demons Killed equals 10, okay, we're looking at the, the, the test I'm doing is an at least, which is 10 or more, just to be safe. But, you know, uh, you can do it at equals 10. It's fine, too. But what it does is once it hits 10, it stops the timer, okay, so that the, 10, the timer doesn't finish. All right. And then in this case, we've also got it triggering an end in victory. Now, you don't have to do that part. You can have it just so that, you know, you can have it trigger whatever you want. But the idea is that when this reaches 10, that's how you trigger your this was done correctly thing. You do that off of the integer test. Now, otherwise, if this timer finishes, it gets to 60 seconds. In this case, we've chosen to end the map in defeat. But again, you can have this trigger anything. You can have this trigger a message that says you're a dumbass. You can have it like set fire to the entire room, whatever you want to do. Um, but that's how you're keeping track of that. So that, that whole thing that I just told you right there is how you do... Uh, that that's how you create a timed encounter with both victory and defeat conditions using integers and booleans now there's other ways of doing that this is snap map and there's a million ways to crack an egg but if you're looking for a good starting point for doing encounters like this this is a great place to start and i hope it was really helpful if you have any questions about this please do let me know in the comments and as always i do hope you choose to like comment and subscribe thanks for watching